Hello, I'm Mary Ruth Carlton, your host for this episode of SDSU Insider. Thank you for joining us as we explore what makes San Diego State one of our nation's leading public research universities. This is a historic day for us here on Montezuma Mesa as we welcome back to campus Rage Golding, Thomas Day, and Stephen Weber, three past presidents of SDSU. Together with current president Elliot Hirschman, these individuals represent 40 years of this university's history and four of the eight presidents who have served SDSU since 1897. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in today and doing this program. I'm really excited to hear from each of you and talk a little bit about SDSU. We're gonna start with SDSU's fifth president, Dr. Brage Golding. He served as president of SDSU from 1972 to 1977. During his presidency, Dr. Golding secured approval to change the name of San Diego State College to San Diego State University, and he boldly led the school in its new path. Dr. Golding instituted a successful affirmative action program, helped get SDSU into the Western Athletic Conference, and increased performance standards for faculty. He was largely responsible for convincing Sacramento to retain joint doctoral programs. Dr. Golding emphasized research, including strengthening the university's research foundation. Also notable is the fact that Dr. Golding's daughter, Susan, served for nine years as San Diego's mayor. Dr. Golding, welcome back to campus. And what have you seen today? What have you learned as you've visited the campus here at San Diego State? Thank you, dear. I'm very happy to be back. We're happy have, to have you. I haven't been back for quite a long number of years. And uh, the tour of the university that I had earlier surprised me very much. It's so much bigger than it was when I was here. Even from the beginning of my tenure to the end of my tenure, the university has looked like it's gotten much bigger. And uh, I'm glad I'm not president right now. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the next president of San Diego State, and that's Dr. Thomas Day. He served as the sixth president of San Diego State University from 1978 to 1996. Now, during this time, he oversaw the creation of six joint doctoral programs, an increase in faculty research, and a great expansion of the SDSU campus. Dr. Day played a large part in establishing SDSU's Graduate School of Public Health and its Freshman Success Program. That retention program for incoming freshmen has since been named the Thomas B. Day Freshman Success Program in his honor. It has been instrumental in helping participating SDSU students obtain higher GPAs and increased graduation rates. Dr. Day, welcome. It's great to have you here with us today. You. you served an amazing 18 years here at San Diego State. So what memories stand out from those years? Well. I always wanted to serve longer than, than Malcolm Love, but it wasn't possible. <laughs> <laughs> I must say my early memories were that uh, this was a very unusual university. Uh, I came in July, and all I could see was co-eds out on the Green Mall. And what I forgot, July 4th when I came, was that it gets cold out here at night. And I was sitting next to Mayor Wilson and he let me have his coat because I didn't bring a coat. <laughs> <laughs> My main impression was that there were very happy students and I learned that there were very happy faculty and staff. And I came from the East where life is a little more grim <laughs> and that was a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. And the main thing that stuck in my mind in the first year was that the staff was incredible. I inherited most of it from President Golding. My own personal staff I kept for all the time. But all of the staff was happy to be associated with San Diego State University. And uh, they have a tradition that they have an annual staff recognition lunch. My wife and I didn't have any idea what it was gonna be like. So we were sort of prepared to go and do our duty, and we were just blown away. I mean, here are all these staff, been there 10 years, 20 years, mm -hmm. 45 years, mm -hmm. loyal to San Diego State, working away in the hardest times. We came right after Prop 13, so we were 
prepared for hard budget problems, happy, serving well the students, serving well the faculty, and I just thought, you can't go wrong with this place. Mm -hmm. The only thing I saw wrong was it wasn't computerized. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, all the staff jumped right in and they computerized the university. Mm -hmm. So I just felt I'd fallen into heaven with this wonderful staff. That's a great testament to our staff. Yeah. That's, thank you for sharing that with us. Now we're gonna go to our seventh president of San Diego State, and that is Stephen Weber. He came to San Diego State in 1996 as San Diego State's seventh president, as I just said. He served until July 5th, 2011, 15 years to the day that he arrived on San Diego State. Under his leadership, SDSU saw greatly increased academic stature, student success, and community engagement, as well as physical expansion of the campus. SDSU also became recognized as one of the nation's most military-friendly universities. Much of this derives from a shared vision process that President Weber initiated shortly after he arrived here on campus. And another significant achievement during Dr. Weber's time at SDSU was a substantial increase in philanthropic support. Dr. Weber established the Campanile Foundation, the university's fundraising auxiliary, and in 2007, launched SDSU's first ever comprehensive fundraising campaign. To date, that campaign has raised more than $380 million. So Dr. Weber, why make fundraising such an important part of your tenure here? Uh, well, I think each of us had opportunities and we each had challenges. And part of the job was to kind of play the cards you're dealt, but on the other hand, to improve the hand at the same time. Um, we wouldn't have been able to be as successful at fundraising if it hadn't been for the work that Tom and Brage did, extend, extending the credibility of the university and its capacity to actually make a difference in San Diego. Um, so on my watch, it was time. Um, uh, in general, private universities have a head start on public universities in fundraising, and, and in California in particular, even public universities lag behind. So now we were ready. We had the university that, that could, that is that, that L'Oreal said, we're worth it. And, and on that grounds, I now had, had a, a wonderful tool with which we could engage the community. And, and happily, the community was very responsive in, in supporting us in return. Well, thank you. Now we go to the person who is actually the president at San Diego State right now. These gentlemen went before him, and Dr. Elliot Hirschman serves as the current president of San Diego State University. He joined SDSU in July 2011 as its eighth president. And with Dr. Hirschman at the helm, SDSU is advancing as a leading public research university, emphasizing academic excellence, student success, community engagement, diversity, and internationalization. President Hirschman, what are your biggest challenges besides following the footsteps of these sure, gentlemen? Sure, sure. Well, the first, first comment I wanted to make is just to welcome all my colleagues back to campus and to thank them for everything that they did. You all have made my job much, much easier. And just to say that it's a privilege to have all of you back on campus. Uh, President Weber, I think, summarized the important work. Each dealt a certain hand of cards and then we have to move that forward. In my case, of course, the immediate challenges that I faced were the reduction in state appropriation. And it's a, a well-known and challenging story that in California and in San Diego State, we've had a reduction of over $100 million in our state appropriation. Uh, but this is an institution, as described in each step with each of the presidents, that when faced with the challenge, pulls together. And so what we've done at San Diego State <coughs> is respond by build on the achievements and create a new financial approach for the university. A big part of that is to build on the Campanile Foundation efforts and the comprehensive fundraising, but it's a whole series of approaches that are inventive staff, that all the folks who brought us the women's studies programs, all of our achievements have again come together. And I think, and you know, it makes me proud to say this in front of all the presidents is that the best days are ahead for our university. Okay, thank you. I wanted to go back to uh, something that 
we've talked about because our vision is to be a leading public research university, and I, I wanted to ask President Day about that. Um, how did it evolve during your presidency? Because I know research, you were here for 18 years. Tell, talk a little bit more about the evolution of research at the university while you were president. Well, what it depended upon was that there was a, an issue which was pressed on by President Love and then President Golding of what is the concept of teacher-scholar. In the rest of the United States universities, as far as I could see, there were teachers and then there were scholars or researchers. But at San Diego State, the way it was when I came, was that there were people who actually taught a lot and still did research. And that was unique. I came from Maryland College Park and there was the usual bifurcation of the faculty who taught and the faculty who did research. And they did crossover, but here it was taken very, very seriously. So I made a point in my annual addresses to the faculty to stress that for all of my talks and to act that way, including when I ended up on the National Science Board. And it was interesting, on that board, which is a very prestigious board, when I first came, they didn't understand what teacher-scholar meant to us. Hmm. And by the time I left, they did. And I think a lot of other universities in the country benefited from San Diego State's guide into what a teacher-scholar really meant. And all you do is you keep beating the drum, and especially you go out and find bright young people who are going to like that. Not everybody likes that. And then when the rains came down in 82, 92, and beyond, you try to preserve that cadre of people at almost any cost. And we managed to do that and then still being protected so that they can still hire bright potential teacher scholars. And you just keep, you just keep uh, recognizing the faculty and giving them praise, recognizing the staff, but especially take to heart what you mean by teacher scholar. And it's a very special thing in this university. Ellie, you're, you're nodding your head. Is there anything you would? Uh, yeah, I think as we look forward and we're talking about our development as a leading public research university, this notion that the research enterprise, it of course contributes, as you mentioned, in the national enterprise to addressing our challenges, national and regional, but it's also about providing opportunities for our students the access to cutting edge technology, to the state of the art knowledge in a field. That's what the research experience brings to our students and that was the model we've developed. I would, I would comment, uh, if you look at all four of our backgrounds, we all come from that tradition, whether it's in chemical engineering or philosophy or physics or cognitive psychology. We all bring that sense of what a research enterprise does for our students and that really is the continuation of the teacher-scholar model. May I add? To yes, this? please do. Uh, it's interesting. Both of you uh, have touched on a subject that I'm very much interested in in the history of, of this university. When I came to this university and, and got changed into a university from a college, and college and university are not the same. College is one, uh, you previously was a subject uh, of one encompassing subject. And it wasn't a university which had many different subjects that were taught. And uh, I was the first one, as was mentioned earlier, that uh, started to spread out and hire other uh, instructors. But the interesting thing is that when I started to do this, I was said no. I was told no. <laughs> this is a... They've all heard that too, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think there have been a lot of no's. <laughs> a lot of no's, yes. yes. Yeah. I was told no, this is a teacher's college. And I was determined that it would go farther than that. And you can see in a few years, relatively few years, how much it has changed. Mm -hmm. It really has. It really has. 
I want to switch from, from that to um, community because I know that there was a time when uh, and President Hirschman has learned this in just two years. When you're the president of the university, everybody knows who you are. And President Weber especially was adept at getting out into the communities. Can you talk a little bit about your focus on community engagement because you were, you were very visible in the community and why you thought that was so important? Uh, there, there's a wonderful synergy between the community of San Diego and San Diego State University. And one of the problems is that some of the citizens of San Diego don't know what a great resource the university can be. And by the same token, some of the members of the university community don't understand the issues and the opportunities within the community. And often, because presidents can be out in the community and visible, you get to be the intermediary between those things. And you say, well, I think we could help with that. I, I know some people, can we get together, sit around a conference table and see what can be done? So we had chances to work with the schools, um, uh, to do things in City Heights, to do things with the Compact for Success in the South Bay. You mentioned earlier that, that at one point we had more student veterans on our campus, this current generation of veterans, than any other university in the country. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, this is a city that that houses great military establishment. And so it's a natural synergy. And, and since unfortunately most members of the community can't know the people that are actually doing the work on campus, they can know us. So they'll grab Elliot sometime. And then because Elliot knows who, who, is, who he has on campus that can help, he can put them together. And then wonderful things happen. Mm -hmm. Well, based on your advice, Elliot, what, what's the future for San Diego sure, State? Sure. So it's really building on the tradition that we've established of being a leading public research university. And I was so impressed as we've had this discussion, all of the themes, for example, transformational experiences for students. That's something that we're very much focused on. Uh, as President Weber said, many high achieving students now come to San Diego State. We want to be sure that whether it's in a research laboratory, studying abroad, developing their leadership abilities, they have that transformational experience. We also have to be sure, and again, a theme that was just sounded, the infrastructure for research and creative endeavors is fully developed. That's the physical infrastructure. It's also equipment and other facilities to support those aspirations. And then the theme of community engagement, being sure we're supporting those who live closest to us, being sure we're a diverse campus, being sure that we're reaching out to the K-12 schools and helping them advance, those are all the aspirations and cumulatively, they make us a leading public research university. So I, I think I wanna ask each of you to kind of give some final thoughts here of this day of spending some time together, four of you together. It's been a great day to have all four of you on campus together and talk about San Diego State. And I think, I'm not, I think it was Raj who told me, you are the four presidents of San Diego State University because under your tenure, it became San Diego State University. So you're the only four presidents who have been the presidents of San Diego State University. But final thoughts that you might wanna share with, with us among yourselves. I, I'd just like to hear what you each have to say. So Raj, why don't we start with you? Some final thoughts. Well, mine's easy. I've already really said it, but I want to repeat it in a different way. And that is, I was the first to face the negativity of the community and the university on growing in a different way from Teachers College. And the University of California was not happy about it either, I might add, <laughs> because we were divided by the legislature into three different steps. And the uh, universities of California were, didn't want us coming in, and we were the first to do it. So it was a, a fight, in a way, from all, for all of us after I came to fight for becoming as good or better than they were. And now we can face them with a smile. <laughs> All right, okay. that's Is a that great fair? statement. Fair enough, fair enough. I'll just make a remark. I, it always impressed me, and, and I think my other colleagues, that the mortar board, for example, on campus is a beautiful stage on which to see 
how a university like ours affects students. Having come up against teacher scholars like Henry Jansen or whatever, or mm -hmm. scientists, yeah. and, and of course the students that get into mortarboard are very special. But they're also just ordinary students, and they liked it here, and they liked their faculty here, and they get national recognition, thanks to Jane Smith, <laughs> that they're good, they're good citizens, and that's what this university is all about. And the people who understand that in their gut are the alumni down in San Diego, not in Sacramento. Yes. Um, one of the things I would say is that, that, and this will seem strange perhaps, this is a small club. There aren't a lot of people that I could talk with. I could talk with Tom and I could talk with Brage because they had sat in that chair and they had some sense of what the issues were. Elliot can talk with the three of us. Um, that's very, very important because this is an unusual privilege to be the president of a university, and particularly a great university like this one. And, and the responsibility is real. It, and, and you want to talk with some people before you make decisions. And, uh, so I found it very helpful to talk with Brage and with Tom, and I now enjoy <laughs> talking with Elliot. The other thing I would say, though, that sounds contradictory is it's very important to remember this is never about the president. Very few of those 70,000, 74,000 students come because Elliot's the president. I assure you, none of them came because I was the president. <laughs> it's our job is to. They wanted to leave. <laughs> <laughs> our, our job is to facilitate the wonderful work that a university does, and we each get to do it in a different way, in a different time. But hopefully, we can sustain a vision through time, pick up where our successors left off, move it forward, just as Elliot is moving it forward now. I'll just share, these are three really smart guys who care incredibly about this university and it's been a very, very cheering day. The other reflection I have is all four of us actually come from outside of San Diego. We came from different academic disciplines, from different regions. Uh, we all came here, we brought ideas and we embraced this community, both this academic community and the broader region and I think that's the dynamism that has moved the university forward is bringing models and approaches from throughout the country, bringing them to San Diego and really integrating them in a unique way. And that's what we have for us moving forward is this tradition and then the movement forward as a leading public research university. Yes, Tom. Uh, only it triggered something. Uh, when I was first here in the summer, uh, Malcolm Love uh, wanted to take me to a lunch. And I could never succeed in getting Malcolm on the campus, basically. So I went to lunch, and it was a lunch with about six women, older women, downtown. And he introduced them, and I learned from their names that they're powerhouses downtown. And the message was, these people represent San Diego, and don't ever get away from it. Jump into it. Mm. And so I think all of us in our own way have followed Malcolm's Nice. recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. And part of it, at least in my time, was that it was a long way from San Diego to Long Beach, much less Sacramento. Yes. And you can forget San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And so there was, a, on the one hand, an isolation of San Diego, which politically was very helpful. Yes. Yes. Long Beach couldn't dare to touch some of us because they knew that behind us were San Diegans, and San Diegans would fight to the death. And that's what you transmit to the students for life. You have to have some, something to be in. And that's why the staff is so good. Thank you. Well, thank you all for your comments. This has been really a great conversation. We really appreciate you coming to San Diego State today to visit with us and share your thoughts. And I wish we had several more hours, but we're running out of time. But again, thank you very much. Thank you. For more information on today's program and to learn more about San Diego State, please visit us online at www.sdsu.edu. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>